Hello and welcome to Course Zero, an introduction to biomodeling. This is the first in a series of online courses in biomodeling and systems biology produced by the Center for Reproducible Biomedical Modeling. This center aims to provide tools that will help researchers produce more predictive, complex and reproducible models and these open source lectures are one tool to accomplish this. These courses will provide anyone with an interest in systems biology and modeling the foundation they need to build a strong understanding of these fields. We hope that these videos are a useful resource for you and appreciate any feedback you may have for us along the way. Now let's get started. So what exactly are systems biology and biomodeling? Well, systems biology is a holistic approach to understanding biology using several relevant disciplines. For example, it obviously uses biology, but it also uses math, computer science, engineering, chemistry, and a host of other disciplines, including biophysics, biostatistics, and bioinformatics. Biomodeling plays a fundamental role in systems biology because biomodels provide a method to test that our understanding of the system, built from experimental data and observations, is valid. Biomodels are generally simplified um, versions of the system um, and they allow us to test specific hypotheses um, which will ultimately also allow us to make predictions that go beyond our current understanding so that we can gain some new insight and direct our experimental work in order to validate the model and better address long-standing biological challenges. One such challenge, for example, would be to create a platform that expedites cures, especially in a personalized manner. Now let me illustrate the utility of these models. Um, let's imagine that we have some drug contained within a syringe here and we decide to deliver it to a population of cells that we're interested in studying. Um, we can see that in response to the drug a portion of these cells, but not all of them, um, begin to fluoresce with this green color. So some protein is being produced that has a green fluorescence. Um, using what we know about the background of the system we can produce this simplified model uh, which contains maybe a few um, genes and proteins of interest. Here we're just representing a gene being transcribed into mRNA and translated into protein. Now once we have our model, which here is pre presented just as a picture, but which, which you can imagine would be represented with mathematical equations, um, we can use the data from our experimental studies uh, to inform our model and then try to use the model to reproduce that data. And we basically use the experimental data to validate whether our model is showing what we expect it to or not. Once we're confident that our model does show the expected behavior, we can then use it to make new predictions about the experimental system which can guide what we do next in our research. For example, we might predict that making some change in our model uh, is able to uh, turn on the rest of these cells here and our goal then would be to experimentally uh, make that change in actual uh, cell culture and try to reproduce the effect that we've seen from our model. And then you have this back and forth between experimentation and modeling uh, to try to get a more effective view of the system. Now what I've just shown you is a small model that might be able to predict some protein expression in a cell population of interest. That is wonderful and that's what the systems biology field is based on. But what we hope that we can do is be able to create more reproducible small models that we can then compound into these larger more complex models. Now here even though this is larger than the example on the previous page, um, this is still a very small model and we hope that we can instead um, create hundreds to thousands of these reactions uh, to create whole cell models, for example, um, that are complex and, cr and contain a large amount of data and detail that is necessary to reproduce uh, complex systems. Uh, and one goal would be to be able to predict the patient response to some drug. Uh, let's say our model can show the exact phenotype of some cancer that is um, that an individual patient has. Well, right now, there's not a lot we can do. Um, it's very hard to test individualized medications, but with modeling, this process is much quicker. So 
except our models aren't necessarily complex enough to reproduce an entire phenotype for one single cancer patient. But again, it goes through the same process here. We use experimental data from the patient, if possible, to inform our models and to be able to uh, reproduce the exact phenotype of that individual. Uh, and then ideally, in the future, we'll be able to uh, use that model to predict how um, a therapeutic would be able to feed into our small system, or in this case a more complex system, and create an output that in this case would be a healthier patient. So again, uh, we could use modeling in order to create personalized medicine um, and be more effective and streamlined in our process of identifying what an individual patient's needs are and how to best address them um, with medication. So that's one example of modeling uh, where we hope the field will take us. And now that I've talked at you for several minutes, I just want to introduce myself and personally welcome you to the course. Um, this is me. I'm Veronica Prabsky, a PhD student in bioengineering at the University of Washington, and I am studying um, cell signaling networks from a computational systems biology perspective. I really hope I can teach you a lot about modeling through this course and that you enjoy the concepts you learn here. Welcome. Right. So, now that we've been introduced, it's time to get started on our course. You can move on to video one, where you'll begin to see an introduction to what modeling is and um, what you need to build a model properly.